Howdy. How about y'all watching that? Hastings Mystery Theater. Next on this station. I appreciate it. That is required to make a logical deduction, even in the face of scant evidence, is an acute sense of observation. You amaze me Holmes. Highly remarkable, I must say. A highly intelligent man. Where did you go to school? Elementary school my dear Watson. Elementary. <laughs> <coughs> Hold on to your hats folks. And on to your green jeans. And get ready to go a few rounds with the dancing bear. Because our feature presentation is coming right up. Is that Captain Kangaroo? It isn't. That's Randall Schaefer, our host, and mystery master. For Hastings, Mystery Theater. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us back to 1945 for a British national release entitled The Echo Murders. In the 1890s, stories about Sherlock Holmes were flying out of the bookstores, and a competing publishing company wanted to cash in on the Sherlock Holmes craze, so they created a similar character and named him Sexton Blake. Sherlock Holmes was authored by Arthur Conan Doyle, but several writers were hired to ghostwrite the Sexton Blake books. Sexton Blake books became very popular, and even today there's a Sexton Blake fan club in the UK. And the business model of publishing, of a publisher rather, owning the characters and then hiring ghostwriters to actually do the books, that exists even today. The Hardy Boys are written by Franklin W. Dixon, and Nancy Drew is written by uh, Carolyn Keene, but neither of those people exist. Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys are written by whoever the publisher hires to write the books. Well, the Sexton Blake books um, were placed in the 1890s, but movie producers moved him forward in time so he could help England fight the Nazis during World War II, at least in the movies. This is the sex, second Sexton Blake film produced by British National in two years and a different production company, though made one uh, about 10 years earlier than this. But that story took place in the 1890s and followed one of the original stories in the book. In tonight's movie, a series of mysterious deaths occur around an old and a seemingly worthless mine. Sexton Blake investigates and he uncovers a Nazi plot to invade England can Sexton Blake stop the Nazi invasion and save England? Of course he can, and we can enjoy watching him do it. Let's return to 1945 and enjoy David Farrar as Sexton Blake as he solves the Echo Murders.
We were fools to come down. It's no use you trying to pretend. This account must be settled. Now. Landlord, where's the whiskey I ordered? Downstairs. I'll bring her up as soon as you settle this lot. I'm going to the bank in the morning. I shall leave the car. I see. It's your last chance, you know. Eighteen pounds, six shillings. Well? I said we were fools to come down. Not we, mother. You've always been a fool and you will never learn. You can't get above a petty sneak thief and a knife. You have no imagination. We don't want imagination. We want dough. And this has been useful. So you still carry that thing. I thought I told you this affair was to be bloodless. You told me, huh? You tell me this, you tell me that. You call yourself the brains of the outfit. Who got us into this mess? Who keeps saying, wait another day? Fox is bound to turn up. You are the fool, does you? If you ever call me a fool again, I shall kill you. And the killing will be bloodless. Where are you going? Since I cannot take a drink, I shall take some air. Coming? I suppose so. Maybe we'll meet Charlie Fox. After you, Mara. He's practically dry. Balmara, there's the end of a crook. And the end of a chase. No wonder we couldn't find him. We'll never know what he was after, and we'll never be able to muscle in. I wonder if... The water's hardly touched it. There must be 30 quid of us a penny. What have you got there? What's that? Diamonds. Diamonds. What is it, Morgan? I beg your pardon, Mr. Duncan, but there's a body down at the mortuary shed. Well? Well, we think it's a suicide. Nonsense. We don't have suicides in Tregal with. Uh, Dr. Gray says it is. He's down there examining the body now. And we think, uh, begging your pardon, sir, he thinks that you might know the man. It's official. Drive on, Philip. <laughs> It's official, Mr. Dunn. All right, let's get it over. Jump in, Morgan. Very good, sir. Here we are, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Duncan. Not a pleasant sight, I'm afraid, but the features are untouched. Do you mind? Hmm. This man came to see me on uh, business. He gave me the name of Edward Randall. Uh, could you give me his address, sir? I believe he was staying at Rossley Farm. But hasn't he left any papers? There was nothing in his room, and his pockets were practically empty. I thought perhaps you might be able to help him. I cannot help you, Father. But uh, could you tell me the nature of the business, sir? No. <coughs> Well, uh, he wanted to buy my property, the Tregal with mine. Come on, Rainsford. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you, Stella, oh, excuse me, sir. The Late board. Warren, later. Uh, 
I wish you wouldn't smoke in here. You know how I detest it? Lots of things you don't like, aren't there, Duncan? Policemen, dead bodies. And you. Thanks. So Randall wanted to buy the mine. Quite a lot of people are interested in buying Tregarvis. Only last week someone offered you more than twice its value. And you turned it down? The price of tin has risen. There are many speculators. That's not the reason. Someone's trying to force you to sell. He's not too particular about his method. And he's trying it on the wrong man. You will sell the mine. And I will take half the proceeds. What do you mean? My dear Duncan, you don't imagine I've enjoyed toadying to you. <laughs> Putting on an act. Pretending to be the soapy secretary. It was only useful because people thought I was so harmless. I'm not really, you know. And now that I've found that letter about you killing a man some years ago, and now that Mr. Randall has turned up, or rather his body, well, I ask you. You don't think that I kill Randall, do you? Yes. You liar. You know that isn't true. You're lying about him and you're lying about the letter. How does it read? What's in it? Oh, so you admit there is a letter? No. It reads, I, James Duncan, confess that on the night of June the 17th, 1920, I killed Robert Martindale. This act was done in a fit of temper. Then comes some maudlin sentiment, finishing up with something about bringing up his daughter Stella in the belief that I am her father. Correct? Lord knows why you bothered to keep the thing, but murder is a vain. Well, Duncan, how about it? Supposing I refuse to sell? Well, then a lot of people will get a surprise, including Stella. And if I agree, what is to prevent me from altering my will afterwards? Well, it's all very simple. First, you will sack young Warren, the girl seeing too much of him. And after that? And after that? Oh, after that, purely as a matter of form, as a guarantee that I receive your money, you will see to it that I marry Stella. You dumb and crossing thief! I'd rather hang than see Stella as you! It's the mine! It's the mine! What? The mine isn't safe to work in! A bad show, Mr. Dunham. Second within a month. Yes, Inspector. What was it? Dynamite? Yes. I heard of the new workings blocked. The water's coming into the third level. Where'd they get the stuff? Ten to one, it was from the shed. Have you checked up? Not yet, sir. Well, get on with it, man, get on with it. Yes, I'd better take the stock book. All dynamite signed for. Thank you, sir. Oh, sorry, Sergeant. Uh, excuse me, sir, but there's a Mr. Beals outside. Said he's got something that might be of interest to you. Who is this Mr. Beals? He's head of the local health and strength society. You know, sir, all orange juice and sandals. All right, show him in. Be good, sir. This way, sir. Mr. Beals. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm Inspector Cotter from Bodmin. You know these gentlemen? Of course. Good evening, Mr. Duncan. Good evening. Ah, oh, Mr. Warren. Good evening. Well, Mr. Beals, what are you to tell us? May I sit down? I do. Well? I was walking past the mine last night. What time? It would be about 11 o'clock. And I saw a man come out of a shed. It may have been two men, but I couldn't swear to that. What made you go past the mine? It's close to my favorite walk. It was a perfect night with a grand moon. And in spite of a grand moon, you cannot be sure whether it was one man or two. Moon shadows, Inspector, moon shadows. And my eyes, of course. Of course. Mr. Duncan. Do you suspect anyone? I've arrived at the state of mind where I suspect everybody. Including you, Inspector. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, you know what I mean. Somebody is deliberately working to get me out of the mine. I've been pestered to sell by phone, by letter, even in person. Meaning Randall? Of course. Who else? Was there anyone else, Mr. Duncan? No. No one else. If it hadn't been for the slackness of my manager, this would never have happened. But, Mr. Duncan, you can't blame me for... I blame you for everything. I no longer require your services. That's most unfair, sir. I must take exception to the... You can take what exception you like. This is hardly a matter for public discussion, is it, Mr. Duncan? Anything more, Mr. Beals? No, Inspector. That is all. 
just one man, or perhaps two. Mr. Duncan, I suppose you won't be sorry to get rid of the place. What the hell do you mean? I just wondered if I should be getting a new neighbor, that is all. Good evening, gentlemen. Can I have a few words with you in private, sir? No. Well, I'm just going to take a look at that dynamite store. By the way, Mr. Duncan, watch your step. What do you mean, Cotter? Well, anyone who wants that mine wants it badly. Are you suggesting that my life is in danger? If anything were to happen to you, Mr. Duncan, somebody might think your daughter would sell. See you later. Now, look out, sir. I really must request... I have nothing further to say, except that in future you will keep away from my daughter. First of all, you sacked me without any reason or excuse. Then you tried to run Stella's life and mine. Believe me, Mr. Duncan, I won't stand. I am ordering you to get out of my life and out of this district. It's that clear. I'll see you with... If you think you can run my life like you run your employees, you're very much mistaken. Who's there? Stella, father. All right. Come in. I'm sorry, father, but I must talk to you. You know why. Yes, it's about Warren, isn't it? Of course. I've just left him. I'm sorry, Stella, but you do not understand. But I do, Father, only too well. Someone's been getting at you. Someone who wants Dick's job. And you've been so foolish and weak-minded that you've given way. I won't have it, Father. Dick and I are in love. He's the best manager you've ever had. And now he's being made a scapegoat for some rotten underhand work. You daren't give a reason. You daren't. Now listen to me, Stella. There is a perfectly good reason for Warren's discharge, but please... Please don't ask me now. Oh, no, Mr. Duncan, that would be most unwise. Please forgive me, the door was open. I couldn't help but over here. Is there anything I can do? Yes, get out. Uh, Philip, you know about this injustice. Your father's private secretary. Why has Dick, uh, Mr. Warren, been sacked? I have already told you that I will not answer that question. Neither will Mr. Rainsford. I should think not, Mr. Duncan. You see, Miss Stella, Mr. Warren may be a most presentable young man, but does that necessarily imply that he's an eligible one? He can't have done anything wrong. He can't have. It's a put-up job, and you're at the back of it. Isn't he, Father? <clears throat> I can't say. Stella, please go to your room. And I promise you that in the morning you shall have a full explanation. Please, leave us. Very well. It's two to one at the moment. But tomorrow Dick will be here, and then, Father, we shall want the truth. And there'll be no need for a secretary. Well, well, now you'll have to do something, won't you? Look here, Rainsford. You have got me like that. But you're not going to bring grief on Stella, understand? Perfectly, but you haven't enough money to satisfy my needs, so you'll have to sell the mine. And sell Stella to you. Do you imagine that I could do that? Why, she loathes the sight of you. Possibly, but it'll have to be done, won't it? No. I shall tell Stella the truth. That you are not her father, and that you're a murderer. <laughs> think again, Duncan. Now, you've the rest of the night to think up some excuse. You ought to be good at that. Happy dreams. <laughs> Repeat your instructions. I'm to break into the library of Mr. Duncan's house, force the safe, and take out the paper marked Kagar with mine, 1895. I'm to bring it to you. Correct. Now go. I address my appeal to Mr. Sexton Blake. Baker Street, London. My name is James Duncan, and I reside at Trigarwith House, Trigarwith Corn. I am threatened on all sides by Rainsford, my secretary, by Warren, my manager, by frightening intangible things which are fast closing in on me. This record of my voice may convey my distress and fear, and I charge you to erase it from the wax, but not from your mind. Please help me, Mr. Blake. 
on the love of pity. Address my appeal to Mr. Sexton Blake of Baker Street, London. My name is James Duncan, and I reside at Tregarwith House, Tregarwith Corn. In the year 1920, in Malaya, I shot a man. This act was committed in a fit of temper, and in consequence, I have suffered ever since. I charge you to erase it from the wax, but not from your mind. The love of pity. Sergeant. Good morning, Mr. Blake. How are you? Very well indeed, sir. Thank you. I got your message. Oh, yes. Do you mind if I have a look at your visitor's list? Not at all, sir. There you are. Thanks. You know, Mr. Blake, we don't get much fun around these parts. I see a murder and that there cliff accident's been like a breath of fresh air to us. Yes, I dare say. <laughs> Who are these two chaps? To Lacey and Robinson. Oh, they be two gentlemen stayed out the fisherman's rest. But they're all right, sir. Identity cards and everything proper. Hmm, I wonder. Do you mean fake, sir? Maybe. Oh, dear. What do they look like? Well, sir, first man's a bit of a gent, well-dressed. Second's rather rough-looking, you know, a bit tough-like. I see. Tell me, did you go to Duncan's library after the murder? No, sir, I was on duty here. Constable Morgan went along with Inspector Cotter. Oh, yes, I know Inspector Cotter. Who's Morgan? Wartime constable, sir, sent down here from London. He's in there now, a bit of a worker he is. Let's have a word with him, shall we? Certainly, sir. Morgan! Yes, Sergeant. Oh, Morgan, we have a visitor here, a very important one. Not half. Mr. Sexton Blake. Oh, and how did you know? Well, I've seen his pictures. How are you, Mr. Blake? How do you do? Sergeant Crosby tells me you investigated the murder with Inspector Cutter. That's right, sir. Where was Duncan when you found him? Uh, sitting at his desk. His head had fallen on his arms. Show me. Certainly, sir. Uh, excuse me, Sergeant, but uh, you're dead. Like that. And uh, the wound? Uh, just there, sir. The bullet had been fired from the direction of the French window, and by someone who was standing. I don't know that. Well, sir, the uh, bullet had entered the head in a downward direction. Good for you. Thank you, sir. Are you finished with me? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Sergeant. I understand that Inspector Cotter has arrested Mr. Warren. That's right, sir. He's in there now. The inspector seems very sure of his ground. Yes, he's always like that, sir. Well, sir, they've got evidence. They've found a revolver in Mr. Warren's office drawer, and a blasted bullet fits. I see. 
Was anything missing from the library? Yes, sir. Mr. Duncan's safe had been opened with his keys, and someone had taken an old plan of the Trakar with mine. Was that all? That's all, sir. That's an error. Oh, Mr. Rainsford checked the contents. I see. Sergeant, can I have a word with Mr. Warren now? Unofficial, sir. Unofficial. Very good, sir. This way, please. Mr. Blake, to see you, Mr. Warren, sir. There you are, sir. Thanks. Hello, Mr. Warren. How do you do, Mr. Blake? This is an honor. They tell me you're in Tregarvis. They? Well, sir, Stella Duncan. Oh, yes. Sit down. Thank you. I've only had a formal meeting with her. Of course, I, I didn't ask her any questions. Thank you, sir. Now, is there anything I can do? Anything? Have you any theory as to why Duncan was being pestered to sell the mine? No, sir. It beats me. The workings weren't particularly valuable. We certainly hadn't struck a new load of tin. Any existing set of plans? Only one set. They're in Mr. Duncan's safe. You mean they were? You mean they're missing? Stolen? Yes. Mr. Blake, you don't think I stole them after... after... After you shot Duncan? Yes. Do you think that I did? Thank you, Mr. Blake. Thank you very much. But why commit a murder to steal some old plans? Why try to buy a mine and then blow it up? Sounds nonsense, doesn't it? Yes, certainly does. Very dangerous nonsense, Mr. Warren. Well, cheer up. You and I will be having a drink together soon. It'll be on me, sir. Thank you. It's all right. Very good, sir. I understand. Goodbye, sir. Sergeant. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Better lock him in. He's dangerous. Is he, sir? About as dangerous as you are. <laughs> You're right, sir. <laughs> Tell me, how do I get to the place where they found the suicide? <clears throat> What's the matter, Morgan? Well, uh, Mr. Blake, uh, speaking personally and entirely out of turn, I don't think it was suicide. You've no right to say that, Morgan. Dr. Gray says it was. Your reasons, Morgan? Well, he couldn't have fallen from the cliff, sir. The body was too far away. He might have been washed up at the tide. No, sir. His clothes were practically dry. See. How do I get down to the beach? Oh, uh, when you go out of here, sir, turn left. Take the narrow path that lies straight ahead of you. That'll lead you down to the sands. The cave near where the body was found is on your right. Thanks. Thank you, Sergeant. That's all right, sir. Good day, sir. Who do you think you are, Sexton Blake? Yeah, no, but I'd like to be. <laughs> oh. Passing us. You stay here. I'm going in. I'm coming with you. Watch this. Come out of it, you smile! Hold that one! You ready? Yes. Come on. Keep down. I'll use my torch. and strength lunatics that bought the house up above had it done. Thought to see it bring the cliff down. By the way, what's your name? Tom Purvis. Lived in Chicago all my life. What's yours, anyway? Sexton Blake. Sexton Blake? <laughs> no wonder they couldn't hit you. You're right, sir.
Good morning, landlord. Morning, sir. Mr. De Lacey and Mr. Robinson in? Yes, sir. They're upstairs. Bit of a party on, eh? Well, the fact is, though, they are celebrating. Oh, celebrating what? Well, they've had a bit of a windfall, sir. Hmm. They're old friends of mine. Do you mind if I go up? Not at all, sir. Number two room, sir. Top of the stairs. Thanks. Come on, we are together, together, together. Come on, we are together. Oh, Certainly not, Mr. Fallacia. Certainly not. And the more we are together, the merrier we'll be. Flick! I see you don't change, Mera. Nor you, Dacier. What is this, a rest cure? Sit down, Flick. No, thanks. Have a drink? It'll be up in a minute. No, thanks. So Mrs. De Lacey and Robinson have uh, come into money, eh? It was a gift. Yes, I'll bet it was. In more senses than one. Where'd you get it? I'll be frank with you, Blake. We found it on... Keep your mouth shut. Oh, on the beach. So the late Charles Fox contributed. Paul, you and I are old enemies. You know that I know too much about you. Now, why are you here? Are you prepared to bargain? Yes. I'll talk and you won't... Uh... Exactly. We followed Fox because we thought he was onto something good. He was, but it didn't help him. He was past that. You didn't kill him, Paul. I know that. Because you're no killer. But now, our friend Mera, I didn't do it. No, for once I'll believe you. You don't use a blunt instrument. Go on. He had money on him. We were broke, so he... Naturally. Come in. There you are, gentlemen. Two pounds ten out of a fiver. Control price twenty-five and nine. Nice going. I know that, sir. But if I want it, I have to pay for it. What a wicked world this is. It is that, gentlemen. Sure? Oh, thanks. I knew Fox. He was a diamond man. He never went after anything else. Where are they? Here. I see. Well, why didn't you clear out immediately afterwards? We wanted some more. So? Fox had been trading Duncan. That night I went into Duncan's house. Just to investigate. Is the bargain still on? Yes, yes. I saw Duncan killed. Who was it? I didn't see his face. He was of medium height, rather thin. Did you follow him? No. I don't like guns. Well, thanks, Dacier. I advise both of you to stay here. It uh, mightn't be healthy if you try to leave. Oh, by the way, Mara, the diamonds. Not on your life. Oh. Well, I'll be seeing you, Lassie. Oh, and uh, try to keep Mara off the whiskey. Usually leads to trouble. Thank you, sir. Will you tell Miss Duncan I'll be in the drawing room? Yes, sir. By the way, have you ever had a look at Dacier and Maron's identity cards? Yes, sir. They call themselves the Lacey and Robinson. Sounds like a music hall act, doesn't it, sir? Yes. Uh, do you want me to get busy on them? No, I think they're more useful as they are. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Blake. Hello, Miss Duncan. Uh, hello, Morgan. Hello, Miss Stella. It's very kind of you to give us this interview. There are just one or two points, you know. Uh, certainly. Uh, how is Mr. Warren? Oh, he's fine. We'll have him out in the day, too. No, thank you. Uh, won't you sit down? Thanks. And Morgan? Thank you. Now, on the day of the explosion, you and Mr. Warren went into the library and saw... Saw Mr. Duncan trying to throttle me. Mr. Blake, my name is Rainsford. I was secretary to Mr. Duncan. I know. I was about to send for you. That to saved you the trouble. Stella, my dear, I want a word with you alone. I'm sorry, Philip, but Mr. Blake... Mr. Blake can wait. Mr. Blake can't. I advise you to keep your nose out of this business. I don't like snoopers, particularly unofficial ones. Why was Mr. Duncan trying to throttle you? 
Uh, come in. Oh, uh, excuse me, Miss Stella, but a uh, Mr. Beals has called. Oh, oh. Beals? Who's that, Morgan? He's an expert on health and strength stuff. Oh, I must uh, try and get him on my side. <laughs> uh, tell Mr. Beals he can go. Yes, sir. Alice, please ask Mr. Beals to come in here. Yes, miss. Mr. Beals is the head of a movement known as the Lotus Society. Oh, yes. The headquarters are in the house on the cliff, just above the beach. Oh, are they? Mr. Beals. Good afternoon, Miss Duncan. Oh, Mr. Ainsford. I thought I would take this opportunity to offer my condolences. Why, it's Constable Morgan. I'm afraid I haven't the pleasure... Oh, and Mr. Sexton Blake. Sexton? Sexton Blake? Honoured, my dear sir. Honoured. Thanks. But surely Baker Street is... Oh, Mr. Blake's on holiday. Funny way of spending a holiday. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Dear, dear, how unfortunate. War nerves, I've no doubt. Mr. Rainsford should try my cure. Through health and strength, we come to happiness. Yes. So you live in the house on the cliff, Mr. Wheels? Yes. We started this little community to do what we can in our small way to improve the world. Very ambitious. Many members? A dozen or so, but all enthusiasts. You must pay me a visit, sir. Oh, I will. By the way, there's a cave immediately beneath your house. That is correct. I had a part of it shored up with concrete. We were frightened of erosion. <laughs> the sea, you know. It was rather dangerous. Still is. Someone took a pot at me down there. Do you mean he fired at you? Mm-hmm. But how shocking. Did you see your assailant? No. You must have shifted that concrete wall of yours. One of your members, no doubt, Mr. Beals. One of my members, Mr. Blake? Well, health and strength, you know. Oh, I see. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you safe and sound. Thanks. Coming, Morgan? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon. Oh, perhaps we can continue our talk tomorrow. Yes, of course. Goodbye. I look forward to our meetings, Mr. Beals. Oh, yes. Don't forget. I won't. Bye, Mr. Beals. What do you make of him? Oh, I don't know, sir. A bit fishy, perhaps. But I must say, even his crazy gang have never caused us any trouble. You're on duty tonight? Yes, sir. I want you to carry out a little experiment for me. What's that? Call up Beals' place about midnight. Knock him up and... So you thought you heard someone moving about in the grounds? All right. But don't you go getting into any more trouble, sir. We've got enough around here already. Don't you worry about me. Check up on. What on earth made you think I'd consider buying the mine? Oh, just a hunch and a, a voice on the telephone asking Mr. Duncan if he would sell. It was you, wasn't it? You're wrong. Telephones, I detest the things. Well, look here, Beals. We've been fencing long enough. I don't know what you're really up to, and I don't care. All I do know is that you're desperate for the mine. So desperate that you or one of your bunch killed Mr. Duncan when he refused to sell, hoping that Stella Duncan would part with it. That's a very serious charge. Murder's a very serious matter, but that part of it doesn't worry me. All I want is a big commission, and I think I could force Miss Duncan to sell. Well? As a matter of fact, I own a certain document which I think might interest you. Only, before we talk money, there's something I want to check up on. It's in my safe. I'll get it. Someone's been at the safe. Stay where you are, Rainsford. What is it? Who could have got into this house tonight? Not a soul. Carl and I saw to that. There's been a burglary. Now get out and search the house. And search him. Go on, take him with you. Oh, look here, Beals, I... Go on, get busy. Come out of that. I've got you covered. Oh, so it's you. Still on holiday. Give me what you took from that safe. I can't. It's... it's still there.
Yes, sir, you certainly scared him last night. The night you thought you was a ghost. <laughs> you know, sir, they're very superstitious in these parts. Well, frankly, I can't blame them. The events of the past few days have been enough to scare most people. How are you feeling now, Mr. Blake? Oh, fine, thanks. Ready for anything. Good. Another cup of coffee? No, thank you, sir. Tell me, what are you going to do about Master Beals? Just now, there's not very much I can do. You see, I made an unlawful entry and was rightly chased out of the house. And I can't prove I was shoved down that shaft. But what about the plan of the mines, stolen from Duncan's and found by you in Beale's house? Now practically destroyed the water, no. That's not good enough, Morgan. I've got to make Rainsford repeat in front of witnesses what I heard him say to Beale's last night. And I think I know how to do it. Come in. Yes, Mrs. Trevelyan. There's a telephone call from Mr. Morgan, sir. Oh, thanks. All right, Morgan. Thank you, sir. Excuse me. Well, what is it, Morgan? Excuse me, sir, but you said just now you were ready for anything. Yes, that's right. Well, they've just found Rainsford dead in his bedroom. His throat's been cut. Get a car, quickly. Very good, sir. Oh, it's Duncan. I'm so sorry. Excuse me, miss. May I go up to the room? Yes. Yeah, I'll be up in a minute, Morgan. All right. It's all right. Go. Just can't sit down. Must have been a rough experience for you. Feeling cold? Yes, a little. Yeah, I'll drink this coffee. Thank you. You sent for the doctor? Yes, he's on his way. Oh, good. Take these tablets and make you feel better. Thank you. Who found Mr. Rainsford? Did you? Did you uh, hear a noise or just find him. The maid was frightened of him. I took him his usual cup of tea and, and I saw... I, I saw... <laughs> yes, 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 I know. Why should I suffer like this? Why should Daddy be taken from him and then taken? And now this has happened. Why? 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 Just lie back and relax a little while. You'll feel better <laughs> Keep an eye on Miss Duncan. She'll fall asleep in a minute or two. Yes, sir. Doctor Gray. Yeah. My name's Blake. Sexton Blake. How do you do? I'm sorry to be in so long. I've had a rather a trying case. Been up all night. Oh, I understand. Let's go upstairs, shall we? Hmm. How's Miss Stella? Suffering from severe shock. I've given her a sedative. Good. Is the room, Morgan? Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, bit of a mess, sir. I haven't touched anything. How's the young lady? Oh, a bit hysterical, but she'll be asleep in a minute. Oh, good, sir. He's left a note, a long one, a confession. A confession? Yes, he's lying open on the desk. He says he shot Duncan and hid the gun in Warren's office. Morgan, that's very, very interesting. <coughs> Doctor's finished his examination. I think he needs a wash after that lot. Been a bit quick, hasn't he? Oh, I don't know, sir. It's pretty obvious. Hmm. What razor did Rainsford use? Duncan's. But he got his initials on it. Unmistakable suicide. He's left a confession. Well, there's nothing else I can do at the moment. Good morning. Good morning. Come on. Here it is, sir. I, Philip Rainsford, residing at Tregarworth House, Tregarworth, Cornwall, confess that I shot my employer, James Douglas Duncan. We had been old enemies for several years, and affairs between us had gradually grown worse. My salary was an extremely poor one, and he refused to increase it. Also, he stood in the way of my marriage to his daughter, Stella. I shot him with a revolver that had been in my possession, and hid the gun in the desk of Mr. Warren's office, hoping that the crime would be pinned on him. Because of the worries that I had been recently experiencing, my nerves had been in an extremely disturbed state. And to this end, I had a violent quarrel with a man known as Charles Fox, alias Randall. This took place a few nights ago on the edge of a cliff. But he goes on to say how he'd like his body to be disposed of. 
<laughs> Bright specimen, eh, sir? No wonder he got tired of life. He didn't. He was murdered. What, sir? Take a look. Flake. Hello, Cover. Who in the name of Blue Blazes gave you leave to interfere? Morgan, you're exceeding your duties. I'm afraid we're both guilty of that, Inspector, but you may thank me later on. Remember the last case? I'm not concerned with the last case. I'm concerned with this one. Shh, Inspector, Morgan and I have been in the library. Morgan! Yes, sir? Oh, get out of here. The pupils of his eyes are contracted and there's the puncture of a hypodermic. When a man decides to cut his throat, he doesn't take a morphia injection. Might deaden the pain, but it would weaken him. You mean he'd be strong enough to write, but not to cut? Exactly. I bet he also confesses to trying to sabotage the mine. Yes, he takes the blame for everything that happened. Very obliging of Mr. Rainsford, isn't it? But Dr. Gray said it was suicide. He never spotted the eyes. <laughs> what a doctor. Oh, I expect he's overworked and takes things at their face value. So do you, Morgan. You know, you thought it was suicide, too. That's true enough. Then was Rainsford forced into that confession and then murdered? He was. Suicide, plain as a pike staff. You see? Well, what's the mystery? I'll strike a bargain with you, Inspector. What is it? You forget about exceeding duties and I'll put you on to something good. Or bad. Okay, Blake. Let's have it. Thanks. How are you, Lars? Pretty fit. What can I do for you? I just want to know if you can identify these for me. Is this an official visit? Partly. Hmm. I've seen these before. But where? When? I've got it. They're from the Van der Homer Nicholas. He tried to sell them in Amsterdam in 1939. Amsterdam? But nobody bought them. No, he was unlucky. Well, what happened? Well, by rights, they should still be there. Unless, of course, Jerry walked in and helped himself. Which is exactly what he did do. And now they're here. And now they're your property. I hope. <laughs> Isn't it strange how diamonds get around? Isn't it? Well, I'll be seeing you, Lars. Tea? No, I can't stop now. We must get along to the home office before they shut. <laughs> Sir Horace Cranston will see you now, sir. Oh, right, thank you. Hello, Sir Horace. Oh, hello, Blake. This is an unexpected pleasure. Sit down. Can I be of use to you this time? Well, I'm just up from Cornwall, place called Tregarwith. I've been working on a case down there. I know. A fellow called Rainsford wrote a confession, committed suicide. Hardly do I land the country. But there must be something else back of it, or you wouldn't be here. Well, in the first place, it wasn't a voluntary confession. And in the second place, it wasn't suicide. The whole thing is a security matter. That's why I'm here, before giving details to the police. What is it? Enemy agent? Yes. Are they after the mine? Very much so. Then why foul their nest by committing murders? Well, they didn't want to. Two of the deaths didn't appear to be murders in the first place. Look, I made these notes on the way up. Thanks. They give full details, together with my theories. What started you thinking on security lines? Diamonds. They were stolen by Charlie Fox. His murder was the first link in the chain. Diamonds? How did you get them? Oh, they came into my possession. You know, stones of that value could only be stolen from the trade. They came from Amsterdam. Amsterdam. That's it. Now occupied with the Germans. Well, I'll leave my notes with you, Sir Horace, and thanks for seeing me. Thanks for seeing me, and I get to work on this. Good. You going back to Cornwall? Yes, I want to see what's going on in that mine. I think it's some dirty work at the crossroads. Well, take care of yourself. I can do that all right. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, 
Mr. Mabel? You, sir. I had your wire. Dinner's all ready. Good. Any messages? Yes, there's a gentleman to see you. He's in the waiting room. Uh, he's Inspector from the yard. Oh. Don't let your dinner spoil, sir. I won't. Evening, Inspector. Good evening, Mr. Blake. I'm Inspector Rickson. Inspector Cotter telephoned me from Tregarvis. Oh, yes. What can I do for you? Just put your hands up. Oh. So that's it? Yes, that's it. Now, go into the hall, pick up your bag, and tell your servant that you have to return to Cornwall. And if I refuse? Oh, Mr. Blake, you're too wise a man to refuse. Perhaps you're right. Uh, Mabel? Yes, sir? An uh, unexpected development has arisen. I have to turn to Cornwall at once. Oh, but your dinner, you must have your dinner. I'm so sorry, but this is a very pressing matter, isn't it, Mr. Blake? Very pressing. Uh, your bag. You must have your bag. Oh, yes. I'll never cook you another dinner as long as I live. He's coming round. It's about time. The next time you bash, don't bash so hard. This will do the trick. The mastermind is recovering. <laughs> Take off the bandage. We brought you here to make you talk. And unless you talk as much as we want, this will be the last case you'll ever handle. Oh, it's no use trying to find me. I can see you, but you can't see me. To save her the trouble of lying, we've been through your belongings. We have the diamonds. Now. Why did you visit the Home Office? Why not the police? That'll come later. Oh, no, it won't. Was the Home Office impressed? Very. Why do you think we want the mine? It couldn't be as an advanced base for invasion, could it? What is the name of the official you saw at the Home Office? Wouldn't you like to know? Carl, let him have it. Well, what is his name? Mr. Mr. John Travers. That's better. Now, Mr. Blake, you are going to write a letter. All right, Werner. You will address the letter to Mr. John Travers. Werner, see if there is a Mr. John Travers at the Home Office. So that's how Rainsford wrote his confession. Well, Werner, there is no Mr. Travers at the Home Office. You should keep your records up to date. Otto, some music, please. And make it loud. Just to drown any incidental noises, Mr. Blake. Now then, the right name. Mr. John Travers! You're lying. There's no such person as John Travers. Are you going to give the right name, or do you want some more? There's nothing more I can tell you! Otto, stand by with the car. Now, Carl! Warren? Oh, me, what is it? More tea? No, sir. Something sweeter than tea this time. You read that, Mr. Warren. Release? Yes, sir. Release? <laughs> Sergeant, you're as welcome as the flowers in May. <laughs> Don't look much like a flower, do I, sir? <laughs> and I can say, Mr. Blake, that drink I promised you. Mr. Blake ain't back yet, sir. Well, you'll do for the moment. Yes, and Morgan. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> may I? Official, sir. Very official. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, hello, Morgan. Hello, Mr. Warren. What's the matter, Charlie? Not in the first three. <laughs> Listen to this. Famous detective's tragic end. Sexton Blake killed in blackout accident. Sexton Blake, the world-famous criminologist of Baker Street, 
is believed to have been knocked down by a car during the blackout. He died on his way to the hospital and was subsequently identified by highly placed officials at the Home Office and Scotland Yard. Can't be true. He was murdered the same as the rest of them. Oh, Dick, Dick, darling, they phoned me about your release. What's the matter? What is it? Sarah, darling, there's a report here of Blake's death. Oh, nonsense. Hello? Who? Mr. Kerning? Oh, hello, Tom. Mr. Preston, Minister of Mines at seven o'clock. What's this you made of? Oh, I see. I know, Tom. That was Tom Kernick, foreman up at the mine. He's had a message. And Mr. Preston, Minister of Mines, is coming down to inquire into the sabotage. What's me to be there at seven o'clock? You better come too, Mr. Warren. They're ready for you, Sergeant. Oh, dear. Who's in there, Mr. Warren? Well, there's Mr. Preston, Minister of Mines. He's a bit tough. There's the Chief Constable, Colonel Wills, of course. And uh, represented the Home Office. Quite a little bit. Mr. Jordan. And our friend Carter. Come on. Now, this is Sergeant Crosby, sir. Good evening, sir. Come in, Sergeant. Come in. How long have you been in Mr. Garvey, Sergeant? About uh, 12 years, sir. Hmm. These explosions at the mine. Any theories? Unofficial, sir. Of course. Well, sir, I've always had an idea there's been some dirty work going on. You see, fifth column, eh, hey, Sergeant? What is all this talk about fifth columnists? It's stuff and nonsense, Mr. Jordan. I'm Chief Constable, and I can assure you that... That there ain't no such animal, eh, Colonel Wills? Also stuff and nonsense. Why, only last week I had the pleasure of hanging one myself. Figuratively speaking, of course. Well, you know what I mean. Are you any serious, Mr. Warren? Well, I really can't say, sir. Well, don't you think as manager of the mine you should know? Yes, of course, but I haven't had much opportunity. Why not? Well, I only came out of prison this morning. Prison? On what charge? Murder. Oh, and who are you? My name is Darcier. Paul Darcier. I've come to give myself up. I want you to arrest me. On what charge? Wandering abroad without visible means of support, if you like. I don't really mind. What's wrong? I want to be safe. In a prison. I'm frightened. Frightened? Frightened of what? My friend Mara is missing. So we're on other people. What's strange about that? I think he's dead. Now listen, old man, we're in conference. Give us a few minutes and then we'll hear what you have to say. Understand? Yes, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, that's all right. Uh, there's a canteen, I'll tell you. Go and have a cup of tea. We'll look after you in a minute. Thank you, sir. It's only just outside. Yes, that's right. He's a queer customer. Anybody know anything about him? Yes, sir. He and his friend are staying down for Fisherman's Rest. Constable Morgan knows more about him than I do. And where's he? He's off duty, sir. So oh, excuse me, gentlemen. Back out. Could I have a cup of tea, please? No. Yes. Hotel. That's the red line, sir. I'll show you the way. No, no, I'll find it. I'll find it. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Are you Constable Morgan? Yes. My name's John. I came down to this address. Yes, sir. Have you any idea what these fellas are up to? I'm not sure, but I've a pretty good idea, sir. So I. Come on. I know this place. You do 
Medusa? Yes. Someone shot at me in that cave. And just there, Dassie and Mara found the body of Charlie Fox. But how do you know the thing? Well, well, Morgan, I am flattered. Why? It's just a bad Whatever happens, they mustn't know. Someone's going to kill Dacier because he saw the man who murdered Duncan. I won't go in. I won't. Keep moving. I didn't see his face. Liar. Stay where you are, you're covered. I tell you, I don't know. Come over to our side and you stand a chance. Stay with me or you're as good as dead. Make up your mind. You will come with us, Dacier. Holy smoke. Recognize that voice. Not quite, but there's something. They've gone. Where they got his heart? He's still breathing. Love, Blake. Can't fool me. Recognized your voice. That that old man? Thanks. Who kills Duncan Dessier? The more we are together, the barrier we'll be. <laughs> Who kills Duncan, old fellow? Remember, bargain? Yes. I promised if you talked, I wouldn't. I'd get to my word. The police didn't get you. No. Jerry. Who was it? Who did you see in that room? He's calling for a doctor. I'm afraid it's a bit late for that, sir. Yes. Too late. Now, we've got to get a move on. Yes. Clive comes right up to here. Rush this letter to the chief constable. The home office gives him full authority. The rats are in there. We've got to surround them. But what about you, sir? I'm staying. I can't leave you here. Help me up here. Mr. Jordan. It's urgent. It's for you, sir. Well, where is he? He's at the back of the... He's at the back of the cave, out of the cliffside. Cave? Cliffside? Oh, I know. See, does he? Yes, he's there. Dead. Beale shot him. Did Beale get away? Yes, at the back of the cliff. There's a concrete door there. I left Mr. Jordan waiting to try and get in. Jordan has guts. Warren, get a hold of half a dozen picked men. If they can be armed, so much the better. And rush them down to that cave. Then report to me. We get some dynamite. We may have to blast our way in. Come on, Carter. Morgan? Yes, sir. Get the commanding officer of the camp on the phone. Very good, sir. and the exits. You know, I take my hat off to Mr. Jordan. He may be old, but he's thorough. Yes, he gave me that impression. I hope he's all right. Surely they wouldn't hurt an old boy like him. No, no, not much. They're hands, Preston. You know, two things I regret. One, that Mr. Jordan didn't take me into his confidence. Two, that Mr. Blake isn't here, sir. You're right, Morgan. Oh, really, Mr. Warren? Yes, sir, all organized. Then off you go. Get into that cave somehow, but don't blow up the town. I'll watch it, sir. You know, I'm rather looking forward to this. Are you, sir? Uh, all set? All set, sir. Hey, come on. And when we get in the beach, keep in open order. There's a chance of sniping. All right.
still see it. It's not that here. Now the hell's the strength, folks? Oh, ain't got much strength left, has he? Yes. Chaps tired of that man up and gang. Ross, spare torch. Punch. Didn't leave us, don't worry. Well, so don't Now I'll make a dash for it. 
When you get a shot, yell like mad to distract attention. After that, it's free for all. All right, lob her in. Like old times, sir. down there at Jerry's headquarters. Warren and Barton are on the other side. Now, on my signal, I want you all to yell like mad and then make a dash for it. After that, it's anybody's fight. You won't need these rifles, and it'll be hand to hand. Ready? Right! Yeah! We hope you enjoy watching Hastings Mystery Theater and the film you just viewed. Randall Schaefer, his wife Judy and program manager Dan LeClaire combined efforts to bring these productions to you, free of charge and almost always without ads. We love seeing the comments you leave about our movies in the comments section under each video production. This means so much to us. Also, Randall appreciates receiving and responding to your many emails. Thank you viewers, for liking, commenting and subscribing to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss an upload. Blessings to you, from Hastings, Michigan, USA.